Unfortunately, the way you learn to handle file uploads has some pretty serious limitations. Even Theo agrees. So let's talk about how you can use signed upload URLs instead, which will save you some time, money, and a lot of effort. With signed upload URLs, you can completely skip the requirement to process and handle file uploads on your own server. This means less money you have to spend and less code that you have to write. A win-win. So I'll show you how I was able to remove all that logic from my server in a couple of minutes, but first let's start with the basics. Now in my case, I've been building a platform where users can upload videos, which then get transcribed to text and allows them to search their videos through text. Now for that, I have a data model of a user video, and this has three properties, a file name, a folder, and the video, which is the file itself. So if you were to search how to implement file uploads for that data model, you'll probably come across something like this. First, you'll have a form, and in this case, it has properties for the folder name and the file. I don't have one for the file name because that's generated uniquely for each one. But in this case, we have our form, we have the file input down here, and then we make sure to have a method of post and an ink type of multi-part form data. This allows it to send a post request that includes the file data to the backend server. The backend server will then take that data and upload to the database slash blob storage. Now I clarify both of these because they kind of serve two different use cases. One is for structured data like the file name and the folder. The other is for the unstructured data, which in this case would be the file itself. So those may be two separate things, or in my case, they're actually tied together, which is pretty neat using Zeta, and I'll show you that in a second. So that's what you'd find if you'd start searching, and you may even go one step further to using JavaScript fetch to be able to handle this form submission. So you can do custom things like loading indicators, feedback to the user, et cetera. So this is actually an example I got from my friend Austin Gill, who wrote a series of articles on handling file uploads. And in his JavaScript version, he built this code snippet, which is a reusable handle submit function. And it's reusable because it grabs the action from the form as well as the form data and the form method. So instead of hard coding the URL and the method inside of the handle submit, you actually get it from the form, which is pretty neat. But this basically goes through a similar workflow where we're still having to send the file to the backend server first and then go to the database slash blob storage. So let's scroll down a little bit and look at what the, the code on the server might look like. Now this is in a JavaScript ecosystem with Node, and in this case using Express as the framework on top of Node. Now if you search for handling file uploads in Node, I've done a video on this, and you'll probably come across the NPM package Multer. Now in Multer, you define where you want those videos to be uploaded, and then you just add the little snippet in here for the middleware in Express to be able to actually handle that for you, and that's all you need to do. So in this case, this is going to upload a single file. And in this case, this is going to handle uploading an array of files. But this has one huge drawback to it. And I don't even know why we share this as a default example. Because what this does is it uploads the videos to the actual server itself. And that's not optimal at all. So this is basically just defining a directory where we can take those file inputs and send them to the uploads folder on this actual server. Now the huge limitation here is there's only so much space on a given server and you'll quickly exhaust that if you're just uploading all of your files right there. So this is completely missing the next step of getting your file somewhere else that actually makes more sense. And this starts to get into the big issue of handling file uploads yourself on your own server and the limitations that come, come with that. So I asked on Twitter earlier, why should people be using signed URLs instead of the process that I just showed you? And Theo was one that responded with a great outline of the potential for errors of you writing your own code, the redundancy of passing a file from your front end to your back end to a blob storage of some sort. In this case, he referenced S3. In my case, I'm using Zeta for the database, which you'll see in a second. This will be faster. And then you're not, you're not having to pay egress costs on your server. Basically, you're not having to pay for the time it takes your, your server to handle the incoming file and upload it somewhere else. Now there's one additional big limitation when you're using serverless. And I took this screenshot from Vercel to talk about their size limits. But in a serverless function on Vercel, your max size is 250 megabytes. And if you think about something like uploading a YouTube video, those are often gonna be way bigger than 250 megabytes. So this is a serious limitation that you can't even pass a file to your serverless function that's bigger than this because you'll just completely crash it. So how do we get around that? Well, that's where the signed upload URLs come into play. So what we do is when we handle the submission, we make a request to our backend. That backend will then return to us an upload signed URL that we can use for the actual file itself. 
So if we look in in my example specifically, we send a couple of pieces of data to the back end, namely the file name and then the folder, and it creates that video record in the database for me, but then returns that signed URL. So after that, after we get that signed URL back, we can call a separate function called upload video, and this will use that URL and send that file directly to the actual blob storage where it's going to be stored. This is completely bypassing the need to send the file to the server. You're still, in my case, making a tiny request to the server to get that URL, but then from there, you're not going back to your server at all. You're going directly to the final destination for that file. So this goes back to saving you money on server costs, getting past the limitation of file size on server costs, and the convenience of not having to write all that code to process the file on your own server. So let's take a quick look at how I'm doing this in my source code. So I mentioned that I'm using Zeta as my database and for my user video records, you can see I've got a bunch of extra properties in here, but namely I've got the video itself and then the transcript. Now what's cool about Zeta is they have file storage built in so I can actually see my files right inside of my database record instead of having to go somewhere else. That's really neat. But let's take a quick look at the code. So inside of my code, when I call my handle form submission, I basically grab all the videos that the user is trying to submit and I make a fetch request to send that data, specifically the folder associated with this video and then the file name as well. So I get all of that and I send that to my, my own API endpoint on my server. Again, no file is being sent. So then on the server, I'm able to parse that information and then I can convert that information into something that I can upload to Zeta. Now, the only thing that I'm doing here is adding this video property to each one of these objects which has a file name as well as a media type of MP4 and a base 64 content of empty. Basically what we're trying to do is go ahead and initialize the record inside of Zeta. And then we tell it, we want it to return to us the upload URL that can then be used to do the file upload itself. So after this returns successfully in my front end, I'm able to grab the upload URL for each one of these videos and then send a put request back to that URL with the actual file that I'm trying to upload. Now, in this case, I'm using promise.all, so I'm not having to wait for each one to finish uploading before I can move on. I'm letting them all run in parallel and then processing all the results at one time. So with this setup, I'm not having to do any manual file uploads on my own server. I can now upload them directly using this upload URL and let Zeta take care of the rest. Now this code is super raw. I've just been kind of building this to get it to work. So if you go through and you have any ideas or things that you would change, let me know in the comments below. But hopefully this gives you an idea of a better way to handle file uploads in your applications going forward. And this is something I'm gonna be using in this project going forward as well. So if you're interested in following updates on me working on this project and a few others that I'm working on, you can subscribe to my newsletter at jamesqquick.com and scroll all the way to the bottom. And if you're interested in more opinions around JavaScript best practices, you can check out my recent video on why you shouldn't be using JavaScript fetch as much as you are talking about how we've changed the way we build applications in modern JavaScript and how you don't need fetch as much as you might think you do. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.